What should I be doing right now? Definitely not recording a podcast, but here we are. <laughs> oh, but my sweetener's in now. Yeah, yeah. Hello, hello! Welcome to another podcast. Uh, no, that's not what I usually say. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the New Leaf Podcast. My name is Garmin, and this is my channel. You can find me online at newleafdesigns.nl, so that's my website name, and also that's my Instagram handle as well. This is podcast episode number 100. Yeah, so I think it was kind of that pressure of number 100 that I put off recording another podcast for so long that I only did, you know, shorter themed videos in between. Um, yeah, but uh, I figured I have so much stuff that I want to show you, so I figured we'll do a podcast episode. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Um, if you like more of my videos, then please do subscribe because I have loads. I have chatty videos like these and I have tutorial videos where I try to cut down, <laughs> cut back on the chatter uh, so, so we can get to the technique you actually want to learn. So um, I have lots to show you. And this is one of them. So this is actually my current obsession. Um, yes. And I hope that I can actually also finish this because I am... Um, I just... Yeah, I get obsessions like this and then they only last a short while and then I'm left with a half project. Yeah. So I am making a blanket. And you may have seen uh, this before, even though it did not look like this at all. Um, in my machine knitting video, you might have seen these. Yep, these are going to be a blanket. <laughs> um, Yes, so I've numbered them now because I've laid them down in the order that I want them in because I am... Let me start at the beginning. I had lots of this yarn. I have some more so you can see what it is. It's Scapia's Downtown. I hope you can see it. Scapia's Downtown. It's a sock yarn. Well, I say that, but it's super soft, so you can use it for basically anything. Um, it's 75% merino, 25% nylon, it's fingering weight, 200 uh, meters per 50 grams. So, so it's basically, you know, your, your typical sock yarn. Um, it's self-striping, which is super fun. I've knit some uh, socks with this already. Uh, I've published the Tornado Toes pattern, uh, which is a sock pattern. Um, you start at the toe and then you basically knit a uh, ribbing that goes in a spiral and you don't have to knit a heel so that's really fun um, and I've published that as um, with three different sizes um, kid teen and uh, and adult and you can you can customize it even further but um, it's really stretchy due to the ribbing so yeah so it's great for socks um, I've also knit hats in this uh, I've knit more socks in this, the City Stripe socks. Um, uh, they use an afterthought heel, and that is a free pattern, the City Stripe socks. You can find all of that on my website, newleafdesigns.nl. And uh, with the afterthought heel, you get a really cool bullseye effect. I usually have a sample handy, but I'm not seeing it now, so yeah, perhaps I'll put it on the screen. Uh, so I had lots of it. And um, <laughs> and then this summer I learned to machine knit and I thought, oh boy, because I was already thinking of making a blanket with this. So, uh, so knitting stockinette strips of this downtown yarn and then with different um, stitches, different 
uh, a different amount of stitches widthwise. So this one has 35 stitches, this one has 60, this one has 50, and you can see that the, the, the stripes are much wider here than they are with these strips. So I think that's really fun. Uh, but so I had that idea and um, I even started uh, knitting a stockinette strip um, early last year, maybe the year before. Um, and yeah, when I learned to machine knit, I thought, well, that's not going to happen anymore. Uh, I'm going to knit this on the machine. So I took all of that yarn. I think I knit up 18 balls of yarn <laughs> in three hours. So that was a lot of fun. Um, when I came home, I actually realized that I need, I needed two more strips. Uh, so I went back yesterday and, and knit, knit those two strips too. Uh, so now I have 11 in total. Is that right? I think so. Um, and they are so pretty! So, uh, I do not remember all of the colorway names or, or numbers. I know that this is Streetlights, but uh, you can you can find it on the Scapies website. It's a, uh, this is Scapies Downtown. So this is a really fun uh they they really look like doctor who scarves now but this is this is perfect for if you love grello so gray and yellow um that's really beautiful this one is called uh something industrial industrial district maybe really beautiful this was actually my boyfriend's favorite as he had a, a ktm motorbike and they are primarily orange. Uh, so I, I was thinking of knitting like a, a really tight cowl for him to go with his motor, uh, like his helmet, because uh, it's nice to have a little, like a little neck sleeve <laughs> almost um, to combat the wind. But yeah, that one is really pretty. Uh, this one, I think, is Leafy Suburb, but don't quote me on that. Beautiful greens. It's really beautiful. I really love this. And this is one of the colorways that would look really good in color work as well. Uh, so if you would pair this with a really, really dark navy or something, dark, dark blue or black, um, that would be beautiful. Uh, so yeah, Leafy Suburb, I think. Um, this one, I think, is Morning Mist. It's really beautiful. Purples and greens. This might be my favorite. I love purples and greens. Really beautiful. This one is called Sunset, and you can see why. Um, I forgot the name of this one. But it's like uh, gray, grayish greens with reds and pinks and purples in there really pretty and you know if you were knitting a sock you would be getting sort of this stripe like sort of this this width of stripes with socks um no idea what this one is <laughs> uh yeah i forgot but it's just, this one is a little bit more toned down, a little bit more muted. Uh, it's like it has a bit of gray over it, but, but that also, it makes it really wearable and really... Still, it's, it's not very subtle. It's still, you know, you can see the purples and the blues and the... But I, uh, yeah. This could be an everyday scarf. So, really beautiful. And is this the last one? I think so. 
Yeah, I don't remember this. Maybe, no, not Baker's Corner. That's the really pastel one. Um, yeah. <laughs> but this is a really beautiful one. I actually planned a design with this. But um, it's taking a bit longer. So really, really beautiful colors. And also this one would work really well for color work because um, there's not a really dark one in here. So you could uh, pair it with a really dark blue, for example, and then have enough contrast in all of the stripes. You know, and I'm saying that whereas um, this one has a very light one and a very dark one. So you can't use one contrast color and have it be contrasting enough with all of them. This one, you could have enough uh, contrast with this if you choose like a really, really dark purple, for example. With this one as well, if you like like a white or a really, really soft pink, you could you could do color work with that. But I'm not doing color work right now. Oh, someone's calling me. We're not doing color work right now. I am doing a stuck at knit blanket. Ah, and I love it so much. So I knit all of these strips on the knitting machine. Um, luckily, it all went to plan because usually on a knitting machine you need cones uh, with yarn. But because these uh, have an easy start tag, so the, the middle thread, the middle end, is marked with like... Uh, an easy start tag um, and it goes pretty smoothly and for the knitting machine you also um, you have a couple of loops you have to put the yarn through I, I kind of it's almost just like a sewing machine uh, where you take the yarn off the thread uh, the thread off the bobbin and then you have to thread it through different slots and spaces um, the knitting machine kind of works like that as well so any weird tension that comes from the yarn ball or maybe some things are like a little bit more twisted or there's a little you know thingy in there a little knot or whatever and uh, most of them get straightened out uh through all of those loops and hoops um right and yeah so now i am mattress stitching these together which it's actually more fun than I than I thought it would be. I kind of like the monotony of it, <laughs> um, <clears throat> and this also gives me an opportunity to film more tutorial videos, so that's great. Um, but what I love most is that, you know, um, when when they come come off the knitting machine, they are curled up like this. Can you see how curled up that? I, let me spread it out. See? And this has been blocked already. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I didn't wet it completely. I just steam blocked it, but it just curled back up. So I thought, what am I gonna do? <sighs> but, um, <laughs> words. Um, so this one on this side is also still curling up right I can spread it out like this and then it just curls back up but on this side it's just it looks completely flat um, and I just love it this is the, the back you can see the seam and on the front Look how pretty that is. I love it so much. And with this one as well, it, it just looks really, really good. And then when you get to, to the unjoined bit, you see it's just like spaghetti. So yeah, and I wanted to show you the mattress stitch in action. So, Let's zoom in a little bit. Isn't that super satisfying? It's, it's, oh. 
I really love it. Oh, I forgot a last bit there. I just love it. I love it. So yes. Uh, <laughs> and this seems like a lot of work, but I did this seam. I did that yesterday evening. I would say it maybe took me one or two hours. That sounds like a lot, but I did this yesterday evening and I only had a little time yesterday. And this, this bit, I did that this morning. I would, yeah, uh, no time at all. So yeah, it moves pretty quickly. So I'm excited about this. I'm really, really excited. Uh, I want this blanket now. <laughs> I mean, uh, I knit all of these strips in four hours on the knitting machine. And of course I have to, you know, this mattress stitching is taking a bit longer, of course. Um, and yes, there is a machine for that, but I'm honestly not bothered by doing this. And then afterwards, because this is not a nice edge yet. Uh, so I want to pick up stitches and knit a border. It's gonna be a very long border. All right, so that is my current obsession. And now, I would like to show you two finished objects. Um, and one, I think you've already seen, my sweater. Um, still nameless. I love it so much. Oh, I love it so much. I've, I've worn it, even though it's not completely finished yet, because I have to decide on how I want the collar. So if I want to fold it outwards and sew it if I want to fold it inwards and sew it or if I want to just leave it <laughs> so that's still under yeah I still need to make a decision on that um, I am writing up the pattern right now um, and then I will send it out to testers thank you to everyone who has offered to test so far this is going to be available in sizes 32, 32 inch to 62 inch bust. Um, so I think that's a pretty nice size range. And um, yeah, if you want to test for this project or for a different project, um, I will put my Facebook group name right here, uh, Carmen Jurisen Tester Group. Um, and yeah, I will give you two months for this sweater for the testing window. Uh, I think that's a fair amount of time. Um, yeah, and I hope to have the pattern ready next week. So I hope. Then this one, which I have been talking about, but I haven't actually shown you, I have knit a skirt. Ta-da! This is knit in 100% recycled wool that I picked up at Yarndale. Um, I think they're there every year. Uh, you can get a bag of five 100 gram balls for... I, I got it then for 10 pounds. Uh, so that was a steal. And, but yeah, it was recycled uh, wool. Uh, so it is a little bit scratchy. But, you know, for a skirt, I don't mind. And I, I'm really, really loving it. Um, I did, I started at the ribbing. And this, there is no pattern for this um, yet. I'm not writing it up. But who knows, right? Who knows? Uh, I started here. Uh, I cast it on really loosely. Um, and then I knit the... the yeah. Hello. Oh. Oh, it's here. Come in. Hey, Mama. Mama. Hey. Oh. No. Oh, Mama. <laughs> okay. She wants to go outside. So, uh, and then 
I went on to stock and net and yeah and then after a while I did some increases and then after a while I did some decreases which you barely see and I still have to sew a tag in here so I know which is the back because uh, I placed the increases and decreases on the side but the only way that I know that these are the sides is that I folded it that way um, yeah so I have to sew a tag in it um, at the end I folded this ribbing double and I inserted um, elastic so that's really nice and I did one by one ribbing at the bottom hem as well and then I bound off with Lori's twisty bind off and in my tutorial video for this bind off I'm binding off this skirt so <laughs> it looks it just looks really nice uh, Lori's twisty bind off is a really stretchy bind off for ribbing um, but um, um, with Jeannie's surprisingly stretchy bind off it's also very stretchy but I find that when it's you know when it's in its unstretched state the Jeannie's surprisingly stretchy bind off looks flared it looks wide whereas this one it, it cinches back in so yeah so I really like that yeah so two finished objects in the last two months um, yeah, uh, I wanted to knit on just one thing at a time, and that has worked really well, actually. I've also been knitting on the Cooper socks, which is a pattern by Alexa Bonstra, a friend of mine, uh, who you might know as Annie Lichley, and she published her first knitting book, was it in October? I think it was October. And this is the start of a Cooper sock. And there's a knit along going around going on right now. But I should say the pattern is only in the book, and the book is only in Dutch so far. So um yeah. And it's looking like this. <laughs> so I'm working with three different colors. And I do snip them off each each time because, for example, I'm using this pink here, and then the next time I use it is is this much, this much apart. So I could strand it at the back, but um, I am not going to. So um, I did kind of mess up the color order because I have blue purple blue here and not blue purple pink but anyway uh, I figured it doesn't matter too much uh, I also <laughs> made a mistake with the heel the heel flap um, I read the wrong side row as the right side row so there are kind of pearl bumps here in between uh, I don't mind I think it looks nice uh, let, let me actually show you a bit close because yeah so in between here there are pearl bumps but I think it looks nice so I should probably get back on these because it's October is over uh, but I, I never really participate in October because for me it's sock all year round sock knitting all year round and I, I just, I really like knitting socks. I really like knitting lace. So this is just a winning combination for me. I'm using Scapes Metropolis uh, in Lima, which is 55, Marseille, which is 18 or 19, 19, and Jaipur, yeah, and 60. <laughs> I've knit so much with Scapes Metropolis that I know almost all 80 colors by heart <laughs> yeah but this is my progress so far I have two more finished objects to show you but uh, they're they're just hats so I feel like you know I, I knit this and 
two days, so it's not really... No, it's still a finished object, yeah. Uh, so this hat, I'm teaching a lot of um, hat workshops right now, and I'm teaching those for the thin hat, which I should show you. This is the thin hat. It's a free pattern on my website. This is it in a different yarn. This is using Scapius Namaste, and this is using Scapius Chunky Monkey, and I'm knitting both on 7mm for the brim and 8mm for the rest of the hat. Um, you need color work, and it's really fun. You need three colors. Uh, you could do it with two colors, so. Um, but I. I think it's fun to use three. But so I'm teaching lots of workshops for the fin hat. And um, yeah, <laughs> during one of the workshops, I was like, you know, um, I don't really need to knit a sample myself, but I usually just, you know, I have to, I have to show the, the cast on and then I'm just knitting with them. Um, but most of the color work knitting techniques I can show them on their own project so I figured I'll just knit stripes and I think it's really cute um, yeah so this will be the Stella hat um, name kind of just came to me I don't know Stella and Stella means stars or starry so um, so my other project is going to have a similar name. So this is the Stella hat, and I will publish a pattern for that eventually. Uh, I hope within the next couple of weeks. This is the Solaris hat. So um, don't mind this thread here. It's just for me to see the beginning of the round and draw the chart accurately. This is called the Solaris, which means um, sunny or solar because, ta-da, I thought that was really beautiful. So you have triangles around the hat and then a sun on top. And this one uses the tubular cast on and the, t the tutorial for that is also on this YouTube channel. Um, and I really love it. It's not really my colors, but, um, yeah, I really like this hat. Uh, this is my own hand-dyed yarn. I'm planning to sell kits, but, um, I wish I would have had them online already. I plan to have them online at the start of November, but because I was in bed for two weeks, that kind of got sidetracked. So I hope to still release the kits. Um, yeah, it's just really nice. It's 100% non-superwash merino uh, sport weight, so it's nice and nice and quick. Um, I knit this on a three millimeter and on a three and a half. Uh, and you will need a five or five and a half millimeter for the cast on because for a tubular cast on you need a bigger needle and oh, it's just really fun you have to try the tubular cast on so fun uh, so yeah those are two hats uh, and then so I'm just moving on because I have a lot to show you and I don't want this to be an hour and a half um, my next color work project. I love this so much and uh, yeah. <laughs> we have this one, this one, this one, this one. So it's the opposite colors, even though you don't really see that. This one. So each square has its opposite as well. Okay. 
and this will be a colorwork sampler blanket knit along on my Patreon page. And I want to say, starting next week, I hope I can get the videos done. Um, I'm so excited. I'm lining up the squares again. So yes, this is back and forth color work. So you're also purling color work. It's not that bad. <laughs> and if uh, if you've not tried this before, I have the knit and purl color work masterclass on my Patreon page as um, already. Uh, and it's available at the first tier, so at the, the five euro tier. Uh, so you pay five euros a month, and oh, I really love this one. Also matches my own fit today. Uh, so five euros a month, and you can also choose um, higher tiers for eight and ten euros a month, and then you get even more content. And um, so you have the knit, knit and pearl colorwork masterclass. You have the colorwork confidence masterclass, where I teach you to knit colorwork in the round. Um, there are sock knitting videos on there. Uh, the, I have so many. The, there is a sweater knit along tutorial series. So you have so many uh, tutorial videos to choose from already. And these are starting next week. I'm saying it now. They're starting next week. Um, so this will be, uh, there are eight different color work patterns here. And I'm knitting 10 squares with uh, for each of the designs um, and then I have a blanket at the end and I'm knitting this also with Scapies Metropolis so the same yarn as I just showed you for the socks and the same yarn that we used for the Sassanach knit along um, earlier this year it's my favorite yarn so I'm just gonna use it um, but I had I had a color pack for this um, so the color pack has 80 balls of 10 grams each and uh, yeah I put them into pairs and yeah so I'm knitting two squares with each combination so these for example they're knit with two balls and then you you reverse the colors it's not as noticeable with these of course but you reverse the color so you use um, the same amount from each color but you don't have to do it with a color pack like this you can also do it with uh, sock yarn minis or uh, regular uh, skeins of Escapist Metropolis or uh, you know any yarn really um, and it's really fun, so I'm going to make a blanket with it and hopefully using that yarn really efficiently because I only have little bits left of each um, ball. So it's really important that you get gauge. Um, but, you know, it's after you've knit two squares and if you still if you can if you can get two squares out of two balls then you get gauge so you can just start this pattern right um, so yes this will be a knit along on my patreon page I'm really really looking forward to it um, yeah I've been sitting on this pattern for a really long time I mean on this idea because um, I have I've worked out the final few color work charts just last week um, because I had to do a lot of tinkering to make sure that it was the way I wanted it to be. And I'm really excited for it. And I also think this would be a good idea for advent calendars, um, because you usually get 10 grams of a color. And I'm also using 10 grams of sock yarn. Um, so 10 grams for each square or 20 grams for two. So yeah, that's also upcoming. All right, and then lastly, I want to show you some yarns that I got in June, <laughs> or was it July? Maybe July. 
because I don't think I've shown you. Um, uh, I went to Alternate Universe uh, on our trip to Wales. Yeah, in either June or July, I, I don't remember. And I, I got this beautiful bag. Uh, so Alternate Universe is owned by Kim, Kim Smith Happy uh, on Instagram. And she has an art degree. And uh, yeah, so it's, her, I love her art. I love her drawings. And so it says cake, skein, ball, cone, and hank. And the back is beautiful, soft floral fabric, and the straps are nice and wide. So I really love it. So that is my new project bag. And this is the label for the oh, dropping the basket. This is the label for the bag. And oh, I just see what I mean? I love her art. She also has a YouTube channel, so Alternate Universe. Um, you can find her here on YouTube as well. She usually does really fun Vlogmas videos, but also, you know, cute and funny vlogs in general. Um, so Kim is really, um, she she's an environmental fighter. Like, <laughs> like me, she, she wants to... Um, waste as little as possible so uh, she has lots of recycled yarns and uh, what i mean by that is that she she buys uh cones of yarn from i guess like old stock from other yarn stores or thrift stores for example and she winds those up so she this is made of three different strands and the label again it's just like oh so cute and so this is one of the yarn cakes three strands it's so cute and of course the the content is going to be mixed um so i'm not i'm not even sure if you know what what's in it uh, it's, it's just, you know, recycled yarns. Oh, it says here, reclaimed from unwanted yarns on knitting machine cones. And yeah, this is a DK weight. And these are sock weight mini skeins. Yeah, so you don't know the, uh, the fiber content, but it's just, it's so fun. And these would be great for accents on on shawls and um, on sweaters. Like you could make such fun color work sweaters with these. And even you know for for my blanket, these would be amazing. Um, and did you know that um, Kim is also doing advent calendars? I believe she still has a couple. So I will link to her. But she's alternate universe. Um, oh, or is it, okay, her website might be art equals happy dot co dot uk. It says that on the, on the ball band. Um, oh, but I think, I think actually they have both URLs. So on, on this label, it says alternate universe dot co dot uk. So I think, I think from either website, you'll get there. Um, so she has recycled skeins uh, in um, in her advent calendars. So an advent calendar for yarn, I would be surprised if you don't know what it is. So for each day, uh, so for each of the 24 days leading up to Christmas, you would get uh, to open one one little bag each day, one little package, and it would contain like 10 grams of yarn. And lots of indie dyers are doing that. Lots of commercial yarn companies are doing that as well. Uh, but uh, they're usually very expensive. And uh, Kim is doing them uh, from recycled yarns. And and it's yeah, it's very budget friendly. So definitely go check it out. Uh, if it arrives later than December first, you could always just do the advent calendar for January. It's 
it's still gonna be lots of fun. Um, and Kim also has lots of local um, indie dyer yarns in her yarn store. So this is not really, really local because this is uh, from Woolly Mammoth, uh, from Emma. I think she's from Northern Ireland. Um, and yeah, I just, it's just a mini, I know, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's just really pretty. And this is her label. Yeah, so I really love that. And I got some fiber as well. Kim is really into spinning herself. And this is recycled fiber. And it's linen. I don't know if it's 100% linen. But I've never spun with the linen before, so it's really, really cool. Um, Kim also has a selection of vegan yarns. So cotton, bamboo, linen, hemp. Um, so that's all really cool. And uh, yeah, go check her out. Uh, yeah, I love her. She's an amazing person. Uh, I love Carl as well as her boyfriend. Uh, he's working in the shop as well. And uh, yeah. They're great, so go check them out. Um, yeah, those were my things that I wanted to show you. Or, no, I have a little bit more because I've also been spinning. One, two. So I've also been spinning, so I'll just show you those. I'm following this online spinning course on Craftsy and I'm learning different methods of how to draft. Um, and this is just, this is something that I had done before that course. Um, and this is all recycled fiber. You might have seen me working on this before. So the white in here is not recycled, but all of the colored bits in here is recycled. And I've basically saved my yarn ends and I've taken two animal combs and just, you know, carded them and spun yarn from it. And it was really difficult to spin. So I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> uh, not unless I can, you know, drum card it together with some actual, you know, spinning fiber because it was really difficult and it pulled apart really easily. So I do not recommend, but it was, it was kind of fun to try. Um, so this one, uh, so this one is, uh, spun with the short forward draft and this is applied with, uh, this is, uh, spun with the short backward draft and, um, yeah, so I'm just experimenting a little bit and I found out that what I actually do is the short backward draft and it's a little bit more irregular than the short forward. Um, but to me, it's it's more fun to spin. Um, and also, I, find, I found out that the way I apply yarns is very loose. You could see that with this one. It's very loosely applied. Like, the yarns aren't really tight around each other. And with this one, I try to do it much tighter. And I actually really like the way it looks. And I, I thought I could not do it this tightly because, you know, when you're applying and then if you're checking the yarn and it like really twists up on itself. Uh, so I thought that was going to be too much twist, but actually after washing the yarn, the twist relaxes and, and it's fine. So yeah, so I actually really like how, how this looks with applying. I really like how that looks. So yeah, I've already learned something about, uh, about spinning. So I'm going to continue and 
spin up lots more. Yes, and I think that is the end of this podcast episode. I have loads more to tell you, but you will have to wait until December 1st. And I will tell my patrons first, actually, so you might hear it a couple days after that. Uh, and yes, I will kind of be doing Vlogmas, but um, maybe not in a traditional way. So I'll have to, I'll have to see. So um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode 100 of the New Leaf podcast. Um, you know, before I reached episode 100, I was thinking, oh yeah, I should do something special for the 100th episode, but, uh, it put too much pressure on me, so, yeah. <laughs> but I promise there are loads more fun things to come, and, yeah, I just had to take the pressure off to actually film this. So, yeah, I hope you enjoy this. Thank you for watching, thank you for being here with me, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.